So this chart over here, the sales chart, which is a bar chart right here, is being produced in Xcode with only this much code, which you see on the left side. In fact, the chart itself is being produced only by these few lines of code. There's a new type of uh, view within the content view called chart. And as you can see, it has bar marks. Now I'll tell you more about the bar marks and, and how to sort of uh, do more with the chart in a minute. But all of this is being made possible by a new library, which was introduced at the WWDC last week, and it is called charts. And that's what brings the magic. You can find out more about charts at the developer uh, web page from Apple. There's a nice video there as well, which I would encourage you to see. But in this video, I'm just going to show you a few of the capabilities just to sort of give you a feel or a flavor. So the interesting thing to note is that I'm not setting the scale for anything here, right? So again, we'll talk more about it, but intuitively, all we're doing is for each bar mark, we're giving the X and Y values. So ice cream is 340. So ice cream over here is 340. Uh, lemonade 1051 and uh, salad 1300. And these could be the sales figures for three things that you're selling at your uh, stall. And notice that if I want over now to go and uh, change one of the values to, let's say, by an order of magnitude, then the, the graph rescales automatically. So the scale, uh, and the sizes of the relative sizes, the bars, it's all being done by the library. I don't have to worry about anything at all, right? So that's quite handy and quite magical. Um, there you go. Also, if I were to add more bars to it, and let's just add three more bars to it, like this, I'll just copy paste them and then I'll name them something else because otherwise they're getting repeated. So we'll call this ice cream two, lemonade two, and salad two. And now there are six bars. And as you can see, it has automatically made space available for those six bars. And we get the, the legends down here. The scale has adjusted, of course. Let's just make the scale a bit more realistic, like so. And uh, there you go. We have one more big one over here. There we go. Beautiful chart done in seconds thanks to the charts library. So obviously, if you're going to make this chart, then it's not a good idea to embed all the values within the code right here. You'll probably want a separate structure because you could be pulling in this data from a JSON file or an XML file or whatever it is or a database. And so we'll simulate that by creating a structure to hold this data. And then I'll show you how to sort of use that structure to iterate through it and, and create the bar chart with even more ease than this. So let's uh, get rid of this chart for now. So I'm just gonna get rid of this here, um, like so. I'll leave the uh, text in, so just say sales. And first of all, let's just go up here and create a structure which will hold the data that we want to plot. I'm just gonna paste it in. It's a simple structure. I'm just calling it a stall for my stall, where I sell stuff. And each member of the structure is gonna have a name, it's going to have the amount of sales and it's going to have an ID because I'm making this identifiable because I want to iterate through it. And so it has to conform to the uh, identifiable and uh, to make it identifiable, it has to have a unique uh, ID. And so we have added this ID here and the ID is going to be the name. And so it's our responsibility to make sure that the name that we add is unique. If there's two names with the same value, then it will throw up, but it's a small data structure. So I think we can get away with that rather than doing something automatic uh, ID structure or a UUID or something. So this will do. And uh, that is our structure. And now here's a variable that will have uh, an array of these type of structures in it. So I'll just paste it in like so, and it's fairly straightforward. So now we have the actual sales from the stall and it, it is an array of type stall. And each member, I'm initializing it as a name. So ice cream, lemonade, buns, candy bars, chocolates, bananas, and it has a sales number associated with it, 100, 200, 300, and so on and so forth. So basically this is of a type stall, which we have just defined. So with this in place, we'll recreate the chart, but this time instead of doing the uh, chart data right here inside the view, we will use a for each construct. So I'm just gonna paste this in like so. And as you can see, still uses the chart keyword to get the chart started. But instead of uh, defining each bar mark individually, I'm using a for each loop and it is looping through sales, which is right over here. And so for each member, which is called I, it iterates through it and it creates a new bar mark which has an x uh, value uh, which name is i.name which is coming from here one by one the names and a y value which is coming from i.sales which is coming from the numbers over here and just because of that we just get this uh, nice uh, chart here and just to prove that the data is in fact coming from up there if i change some data here just like before you will see that uh, the, data, the data will rescale correctly and so now the data is coming from a data source and again this is now within the code but you can see that easily this could have been uh, coming from a rest api it could have been a json file fetched from some other website from some database and so it's very scalable if you do it like this 
Now suppose we had data for not one but two data series simultaneously. For example, we could have sales data for a couple of months or more than two months. And so let's just first of all add one more uh, field over here. I'm going to call it month. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to define it as a string and we'll have the actual month name in there. In reality, you might have want to have a date over here. And as soon as I do that, I get a bunch of errors here because it is expecting the, uh, the month in all of these. So let's just add that. And I will use the multi cursor facility available in Xcode to do that, holding down shift and control simultaneously. I can get multiple cursors like this, just carefully placing them in the right place. And with that, I just go comma and then I go month and um, then I go colon and then we have something called, let's just call this the January data. So I'm just going to call it Jan, right? Uh, if I do this now, then the errors will go away because now I have the month field. Now, so far, nothing has really changed in my data. In fact, also, let's just get the scaling right. So let's just leave it at this for now. Right. Nothing has changed. It is still just one data series and it's looking exactly like before. But now let's add another month to it and see what happens over there. So I'm just going to copy paste this bunch over here like this, paste it back in there. But this time, and again, I'll use the multi cursor for this thing as I will show you in a minute. Uh, let me just quickly select these, all of them like this, this again, I'm holding down the shift and control keys together to get the multi cursor going. And then I can just delete them together and call these uh, Feb. And these are February numbers now, right? So this is now a different data series. And Jan is a different data series. But again, the graph is not showing this uh, differently yet, because we haven't added anything for the second series. And I'll just show you how it's done. Uh, in a minute, but you will realize that it's already doing something interesting. It's adding up the numbers for sales for ice cream. For example, ice cream is 100 over here and 100 over here. And if you look at ice cream uh, over here, it's now at 200. Uh, let's pick one that's easier to read. Let's say chocolate. It's chocolate is clearly at 1000. And over here, we have 500 here and 500 here. And so it has automatically added up the similar data points and shown us the total without doing anything on our part, which is pretty phenomenal. But of course, we want to separate out these sales for January and February separately. And uh, let's just do that next. So to do that, I'm just going to come down here and where it says bar mark, this line over here. Let's just isolate this so it's very clear where I'm adding it. Wherever this ends, so it starts over here, it has an X value and a Y value, wherever it ends, uh, over there, I'm just going to paste this in foregrounds style by value month dot month uh, i dot month and so immediately you can see that the two series are now separated out uh, you get this nice little legend down here the blue is for january green is for february and uh, the values are separated out so again let's just go through this all i've done is to the bar mark i've added a foreground style and it is being styled by value uh, of month which is right over here so this is the key that it uses and the value that it uses is i dot month which is coming from the for each and so for each sales record it looks at the month and separates them out into january and february automatically so that's pretty neat um, also notice that you get january uh, you get the green one which is february on top and january at the bottom uh, if you want to reverse the order you can reverse the order over here and if you just have the data sets loaded like this, then you will get the reverse order as well. So just wait for it to render. It's just rendering over here, as you can see. And now it's in the reverse order. So you get February 1st in January. So I'm just going to undo that because we wanted it the other way around was more logical. But I just wanted to show you how to reorder them if you want to do it for some kind of a series. So that's pretty neat. I've got two different series and uh, the graph still looks very nice. Everything is scaled properly. Now let's add a few more bells and whistles and a few more tricks to it. So notice that for the two series, it has automatically picked uh, green and blue. And actually they look quite nice. But if you want to customize it and you have your own colors, then you can add something over here. Now this time I'm not adding it to the bar mark, but to the chart, right? So this is the braces for the chart and this is where it ends. And so over here, I'm just gonna paste it in. I do a dot foreground style scale. And within that, I have an array. And that array says that for January, I'm just gonna reformat this to make it easier to read. For January, use orange, and for February, use purple. And that's what it's doing. And again, you can use any colors you like. So if I wanna have a yellow, you know, knock yourself out, it will now become yellow. And uh, to be honest, the original colors are looking nice. But, you know, I just want to show you how this is done, right? 
Uh, yeah, that's what that was not bad. So you can have any colors you like. Just be careful that it is quite sensitive to the exact legends over here. So if I instead of February, I accidentally do small f, for example, over here, then you know it, it will not work. And in fact, it will give me some kind of an error because it's trying to find uh, the scale and it's trying to find something that goes with F E B with F capital. It doesn't find it, and so it gives me an error. So you have to be careful over here. And again, if this was an actual app uh, sort of coming in with live data, then you will probably not hard code these in, but you will fetch them from the data set and embed them over here. So the bottom line is you can change the colors. There's a lot that you can change, by the way. I'm just giving you a little flavor, a little feel for it right now. So here's another trick. You can actually f um, flip the uh, chart and make it uh, horizontal lines instead of vertical bars. And so to do that, I'm just gonna take sales here, uh, names here, and then have sales here, and names, name rather, over here, and just wait for it to update. And there you go. <laughs> now it's on its side. And this is useful if you have very long sort of uh, names over here, right? Instead of, for example, if it was just ice cream, let's use the, uh, make it very, very long. Let's say 888-777-666, some kind of a code number, etc. Then uh, just waiting for it to render over here. Then, then it's, you know, if it was the other way around, then it'll probably overrun the next legend, but now it looks nice and neat. And so that's uh, that's handy to do as well. Let's just actually undo this for now. Um, let's just flip them around again. And I think I have, yeah, that should do it. And there we go, back to normal. Now, one other thing that you can do, and this is provided by Xcode 14, is that you can preview uh, these things. And this is not just for charts, but generally speaking, um, SwiftUI now has this facility. You can preview your sort of view under different conditions. If you click over here, uh, you can see how it looks in different color schemes. So if I click here, you can see that in the dark mode also, the chart looks great. Um, the text color automatically changes from black to white, and it looks uh, quite nice over here as well. Similarly, you can also check it for orientations. And you can see that it works quite well. It automatically uses the variable space so that it looks nice in uh, all the orientation. So that works well. You can also have uh, you know the dynamic type variants and so for large, small, extra large, um, various sizes of fonts. You can see so if some if the user has selected an extra large uh, display of, for his screen, his or her screen, then then this will probably get cut off. And so you can check that out. And so all of these facilities are provided by Xcode 14. These are new and they're very, very handy indeed. So that's it. Uh, this was just a brief flavor of the kind of charts that you can do. You can go on with this. I mean, there's a lot of options. I've gone through the documentation. There's tons and tons of customization options. You can do very fancy stuff. Uh, I'll not go into too much detail. Maybe do a separate video if there's interest on this with some more fancy charts. But uh, the idea here was just to give you a flavor of how easy it is to create charts, the new charts uh, library and uh, happy charting.